Hi everybody. Um, I wanted to do my 37 week update this way um, because I still haven't been able to post a vlog yet. I've just been running into several different problems that I want to get fixed because I want to do it right and I don't just want to like post something um, that I'm not super happy with. So, um, But I did want to go ahead and and post an update in this pregnancy because we're getting so close to the end here. It's gonna, it's she's gonna be here before we know it, and I don't want the time to pass and then be like, I never checked in and updated on um, what's been going on. So there has been a lot that has changed. So I'll fill you in on as much as I can possibly remember to do without making this like an hour long video. So, um, first of all, I have been having some labor signs. Um, well, just signs that my body is getting ready for that big day. So, um, lots of contractions. And even the other day while I was out running errands, um, the whole time I was out, like every little thing that I did or picked up or, just walking from like one aisle in the grocery store to the next was like bringing on contractions. They were not progressively getting stronger or progressively getting closer and closer together. And I was only gone for like an hour and a half. So I didn't think too much of it. I just kind of knew that that was my body's way of practicing. Um, but I did decide at one point that if it continued even when I got home that I would start timing them. But um, sure enough, um, by the time I got in the car to head home, they stopped when I was sitting in the car again. So I knew that that was just, I, I wouldn't even necessarily call it false labor. I would just call it, you know, practice contractions like Braxton Hicks contractions and my body getting ready for um, delivery day. So, um, Last I checked, I have now put on, uh, I want to say it was 35 or 36 pounds. So exactly like a pound a week, pretty much for the 37 week mark. Um, that's what happened last time. And I ended up 39 pounds of weight gain at the end of the pregnancy when I delivered him at 39 weeks and three days. So. That doesn't really surprise me there. I think the only difference this time around is that um, the the 35, 36 pounds looks like more on me. It doesn't, I'm not exactly the same size as I was as last time. Hi, bud. Um, I definitely feel and look a lot bigger, um, but I think it's because of the fact that she's a girl and not a boy this time. And the um, extra ex estrogen I've read actually makes you carry your weight differently. So that explains a lot of that for me. Um, as far as symptoms go, my ribs are very achy because she's still very high up. And I'll talk about that a little bit more. Um, She's very, she, she's so high up that it's causing my ribs to hurt a lot and not just at the end of the day, like throughout the day, depending on kind of where she's got herself um, positioned. And as you can tell, like, I'm just sitting here talking and like, I'm out of breath. <laughs> like the shortness of breath this time around has been crazy. Like, and I even noticed it at one point, like when it really started, um, being obvious I just remember thinking like this is way more than I remember it being with my second baby like and just any little thing that I do and I'm constantly like gasping for air so again um, I'll talk a little bit more about that in a second because now I think I kind of understand why um, I'm still having a lot of heartburn like I just know at this point that if I don't take Zantac around lunchtime, I will be absolutely miserable by dinner time. And if I don't take one in the later part of the day, 
that um, I won't even be able to go to sleep at night because the heartburn will just be so bad. Um, I have had a couple of headaches, nothing too bad, um, and I actually think it's because of the weather. The weather's been kind of weird lately, so I think it's been the weather shift. And my husband had a headache the other day, and he doesn't he doesn't really get them like I do. So I'm I'm thinking that it's the weather. Um, what else? I'm trying to think. Um. My eyelashes started growing back, but not completely. Um, but I think I even, I did mention that on the blog, that they did start growing back. It was the craziest thing. I never thought that that would happen for, for me. And in fact, I hadn't even heard of it until it happened to me and I kind of like looked into it and saw that like some other women were having the same, like kind of the same thing happen. Their, their, um... Like, even when, like, her eyebrows were falling out, it was crazy. Um, my hair has been really, really thick and full, and it grew really fast during this pregnancy. So, um, that was kind of weird that, like, my hair was getting, like, this great side effect, but then my eyelashes were falling out. It was really weird. Um, so, I went to my 36-week checkup at the doctor and I knew that he was going to go ahead and start um, doing cervical exams to see if I was progressing at all and um, that it was basically time to start talking about the fact that I was at that point almost full term and um, I knew that another ultrasound was not likely unless there was a reason to do it. So even though I wanted to see the baby, it was like, well, hopefully I don't need an ultrasound. So I went to my 36 week checkup. He did do a cervical exam and um, it was actually pretty awkward and I cried about it later because it was just so unexpected the way that it happened. But um, he was doing the cervical exam and he kept saying, I can't, I can't feel her head. I can't feel her head. And, you know, I'm thinking, I'm already, like, in this terribly awkward position, right? And I'm just laying there, like, what do you mean you can't feel her head, you know? And so he's like, well, it's either just not there or she hasn't dropped yet. And I, I said, well, I can guarantee she hasn't dropped yet because I still can't breathe and I can still tell that she's really high. So then what do you mean her head's not there? Like it just, it was not something that I wanted to hear, you know? So he said, well, just go ahead and get dressed and um, I'll be right back. So it was, just, you talk about vulnerable, like it was awful. So I'm like, okay, I'm like left in the room and I have to get dressed and then just, you know, try and call my mind before he came back in. And so he comes back in, and he's kind of saying the same thing. He's like, well, you're kind of starting to dilate, um, like just at the bottom, but not at the top of the cervix, which is normal. That's fine. Um, but I can't feel her head there. Um, so I'd like to do an ultrasound. And I'm thinking, okay, well, I'd like to do an ultrasound too. I want to see her, but why aren't you feeling her head? You know, just because she hasn't dropped, like why, why is it that she hasn't dropped or it's not there? He's like, well, she, she could be breech. And I just was caught off guard so, so much because I just never, I never thought she might be breech. Like I never thought of that as being a possibility for her. All the movements that I was feeling I was just positive about what I was feeling. I'm getting kicked in the ribs, kicked in the sides, and I'm feeling her head turn down there. It's, I, I can feel it, you know. It's, I was just so sure of that. So he said, well, okay, so, you know, you think you're feeling the kicks up here. That's good. Um, let's just do an ultrasound to be sure. Can you come back, you know, in two days, which was Thursday. I was like, yeah, okay, I'll come back, you know, in, in two days, and went home and told my husband, 
and my attitude was like, <laughs> I mean, he doesn't know what he's talking about, right? My doctor who went to medical school, who sees like two dozen pregnant women a day and delivered Lord knows how many babies. I'm like, he doesn't know what he's talking about. I know where this baby is. She is definitely head down. You know, she just hasn't dropped yet because I can't catch my breath. Um, it's fine. It's fine. It's not a big deal. But I guess just in case we should talk about the possibility of her being breached and what that would mean. So we did. We had a short conversation about it. And okay, if she was in the off chance that she was breached, what would we want to do as far as our options go? Blah, blah, blah. So we talked about it and I kind of just laughed it off because I was like, but that's not going to happen. So two days later, I go back in, um, he gets me into the ultrasound room and sure enough, she is breech. Her head was all the way up here on my left side, like under, like in my ribs on my left side, her back was facing out. So she was facing toward my back and her little bottom was over on my bottom right side. So I was just completely taken aback. Um, it just was so surprising, but thankfully we had talked about it. And so I was confident, you know, as confident as I could be when he asked, uh, you know, he gave us, gave me the options, um, which I already kind of knew about, which were, um, you know, I can do, an external cephalic version, an ECV, um, which basically just means trying to manipulate and like move her from the outside. He would have to book an OR to do that, so I'd have to go into the hospital and do that. Um, it requires and involves no medication, which you might think of as a good thing and you might think of as a bad thing because it's not exactly comfortable. And um, I can only imagine the nerves that would be involved with that. So, you know, there's that. It kind of is a big ordeal. And um, it's only about 50%, uh, it's only got about a 50% success rate. Only works about half the time. And then there are the, the chances that come along with it. Um, it could stress her out. It could stress out the baby. Um, you know, making her go into distress and it could also trigger labor, like, um, not an early labor cause I would have been full term, but you know, it would, it could trigger it before my body naturally initiated it. Um, and then there's the chance that it could not work at all. And then there's the chance that it could work, but then I go home and she turns again. So, you know, all that for nothing, so to speak. Well, we, sorry. So we had already kind of talked about it and just from what I already Daddy, knew about it. Daddy. You wanna say hi? Mommy? Hi. Hi, mommy's hi. filming a vlog, so hi. we can't do hop top trees right now. Okay? No, wait. I'll tell you when I'm ready, okay? Um, You know, I already knew a little bit about it and then when we were talking about it the night before or the you know the night you want a naranja okay can you wait a second I'll bring it to you okay okay thank you <laughs> okay okay that's the same thing that's right you can get one of those. Mm -hmm. So I already knew a little bit about it, but then I had also looked looked into it as we were talking about it the night of my first appointment that he suggested we do an ultrasound and just check. Um, and just from what we no. researched and what I knew about it, we decided that that wasn't really for us. Um, that the risks just didn't outweigh the possible benefits. Um, so we kind of knew that going into it, that that was not something that we would consider as an option. 
So then he says, you know, the other option, the other choice would be not even really option, like it's either or. So the other choice that we would have is to go ahead and schedule a C-section and have her born uh, the, via cesarean. That, even though it seemed to be the best choice for us as far as like risks and benefits and chances and all this other stuff went, you know, making sure that she's, she's born um, <clears throat> under the very least stressful scenario possible, that seemed like the best option for us. Um, even though it comes with its own set of worries and its own set of risks and all of that, that was just the way that we kind of decided ahead of time what we would go if she did end up being breached. So I let him know then, you know, obviously that's not what we wanted. That wasn't our first choice. That's not how our other two were born. Um, and it was upsetting and disappointing and all of that, but we just felt like that was the best choice for us um, with her being breached. So he went ahead and scheduled it. Um, we didn't really talk about it a whole lot, but he kind of agreed with us that, yeah, you know, in his experience, our, our doctor felt like um, in his experience that was just going to be the best way to go. Um, for all of this and the good news is that um, it would be like a planned routine c-section it's not like um, I went into labor and something happened and they needed to do an emergency c-section that happens all the time and everything turns out fine and everything but you know obviously there are gonna be more risks with things like that um, and that's not our case, thankfully. It would be considered routine and low risk kind of thing. So, so we're thankful for that. It took me a few days, honestly, to wrap my head around it. And I'm really just now at the point where like, I can talk about it and think about it without wanting to cry. Um, I know it's like no big deal to a lot of women because they've had either some or one or all of their babies via c-section and everything was great and fine and they would do it again in a heartbeat and all that or even <clears throat> you know that that's their preference and all that but that's not how it was for me that's not how it is for us like I had two great um, labor and deliveries with my boys everything went so beautifully like it it was just wonderful I had wonderful experiences with it um, my recovery was easy. I had an easy time, you know, as easy as it can be. Um, recovering once I got home and in the hospital. Um, and, and the experience with my second of being able to do the skin to skin time immediately and nurse him immediately and get that bonding time, um, was just so special that I, I was scared not to get that with this third one. Um, I was able to clarify a few things about the hospital's uh, policies and how my doctor does things and all of that today at my 37 week appointment. Um, so I had some of those questions answered and it, it helped me put my mind at ease big time because some of our biggest concerns were, okay, well, you know, do I have to go into recovery by myself? Am I going to get to hold the baby right away? You know, what happens during that, what they call the golden hour? Um, what happens then if I'm being sewn up and cleaned up and put in recovery and being watched after major abdominal surgery? Okay. But he was able to clarify that um, for our hospital anyway, the um what they'll do is they'll immediately give her to me and i'll be able to snuggle her and kiss on her and then when it's and of course my husband will be in there with me during the surgery and we'll get to like see her be born and all of that and be there and then while they're sewing me up and getting me cleaned up um and ready to go to recovery 
he, my husband will be able to take her to recovery and immediately start skin to skin time and snuggling with her and bonding with her. She won't have to go to a nursery or anything like that. You know, God willing, everything's okay. She's fine and like every, everything is, is good. And then he'll just be able to go to straight to the recovery room with her and, and already starting like skin to skin contact and all of that. Wait for me there. And then during like the 20 minutes or so that it takes to get me sewn up um, and out into the recovery room, then I'll, I'll meet them in the recovery room and then I'll start skin to skin time with her and be able to nurse her immediately. So it'll only be about 20 to 30 minutes if that that I'm you know in between I'll have already gotten to snuggle her see her and you know be with her for a few minutes and then a gap of about 20 to 30 minutes and then I'll have her again but during that gap during that 20 to 30 minutes she'll be with my husband and she'll be on my husband's chest having that time with him I'm good with that. Like I am fine with that. Like that that makes me feel so much better. I had ha heard stories from other women that the baby immediately like after they saw the baby and like kissed the baby, they took him off to a nursery and then the mom had to go to recovery for an hour or more. It is dangerous. It is dangerous. Yeah, don't what? do that. I strangled. Okay. <gasps> Can you pick it up then? Thank you, baby. No. Okay, well, that's fine. Um, <coughs> um, and then while they were in recovery for like an hour or more, the baby was in the nursery. And even some of them were saying that they found out later that their baby was given formula in the nursery and that wasn't their choice. Their choice was to exclusively nurse the baby um, so that was a disappointment to them and just different things like that, that I had heard that I was like, well, I'm feeling less and less in control, you know, of what, of what my birth experience is going to be like with this third one. And, you know, that was upsetting. So I am glad to have some clarification on that and on my hospital's policies and what, what I can expect when we, when we go in for that. So Either way, like I do feel better. Um, so when I went in for my 37 week check today, I did tell him that um, I am having, you know, contractions more and more and that it seems like even some of the littlest things that I do can bring them on. And um, he was like, well, <laughs> you may not make it to your scheduled c-section you know which i i kind of knew was a you know that's a chance anyway i'm 37 weeks and three days today so um i had my first like a week from now i had him at like 38 and a half weeks and then my second i had at 39 and a half weeks but um this being my third and already being you know pretty far along like there is a chance, of course, that I will not make it to that scheduled C-section. I am scheduled at 39 weeks and two days. So, um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I may not make it then. So he said, you know, if you go into labor, if you start having regular contractions, the policy is a little bit different. We just want you to be having regular contractions for several hours. They don't have to be progressively stronger. They don't even have to be progressively like closer and closer together. Just if they're regular for more than like two hours, um, come on in because you're already scheduled for a C-section. Once we know you're in like early labor, we can just go ahead and get you in. It's not like if you're um, going to have a vaginal delivery where they want you to be so many centimeters before they'll actually admit you out of triage. Um, it's not like that. It's not like you have to meet like these requirements to be like, okay, she's in, you know, active labor, not active labor, but um, a certain phase of labor during those early stages. Um, and then I think after four centimeters, you're considered late like late early phase 
it's they break it down differently so I can't remember necessarily but um it's not like that when you're scheduled for a c-section when you're just scheduled for a routine c-section they just need to know that you are at the beginning stages of labor and then they can go ahead and get you in so he said if that happens just come on in and we'll bump you up there they 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 didn't give me too much hope of her turning on her own because I am already 37 weeks um, after 36 the chances of her turning on her own are slim to none so of course it does happen it happens all the time I've heard so many wonderful stories of the baby turning even the baby turning like at the last minute and like that's kind of the baby's way of initiating labor and saying like okay I'm ready to go and they flip over and get in the head down position I would love that to be our case like I would I would love that and I am holding out hope my husband is holding out hope um, I have done a few little tricks and things that like they suggest to do um, for encouraging the baby to turn or at least like opening up the space for them to be able to turn and all of that. I've done all of that knowing it's it may just be to make me feel better like I'm doing something. But um hey, I mean anything is is it's worth a shot, right? As long as it's safe and it's not going to put her or me in any danger, like we're up for trying it. So we are going to hold out hope um and then today when I went for my for my checkup, she had turned sideways. It was really funny. So instead of her head being up here under my ribs, it was all the way over here on the side. And then her little booty was over here on the other side. And I looked all oblong. But um, by the time I got home and um, eaten lunch and like rested a little bit, her head was back up here. So I kind of take that as a good sign like, well, she's not completely out of room. You know, she's got some room to move a little bit. So, you know, we've still got another week and a half. Maybe she'll be one of those babies that just kind of whoop and flips over one day. That would be wonderful. Um, so, anyway, that's that's the majority of my update. Oh, and I, I did lose a pound. According to his measurements... I did lose a pound from last week. Um, I'm kind of thinking his, 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 not his scale is off, but like his measurements are off because like I weigh myself at home um, almost every week I've weighed myself and I've consistently done the one pound a week thing. Um, but just depending on like what I'm wearing or like even when I go into my appointments, I may or may not have eaten breakfast. Um, I may or may not be retaining a little more water than usual, depending on like what I've eaten that week or the day before or whatever. And, and just like even what I'm wearing, like sometimes if I have boots on instead of sandals, like that makes a big difference too. So that may be that may be wrong but it, it could be right too because I haven't weighed myself this week yet um but but I will say that 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 happens for a lot of women at the very very end of the pregnancy um because of the nesting because of different reasons I've been nesting like crazy so like my activity levels are like really high right now because I'm still working out and um I'm still working out regularly for usually five days a week. Um, I did not run this week because last week it was just way too hard on me and I felt horrible afterwards. It was almost like, okay, I can get through, you know, a workout if it's uncomfortable during, you know, because that it is what it is. But then afterwards, I just felt horrible the rest of the day. So I just told myself, I'm not going to be, I'm not going to run anymore this pregnancy. Um, so I've replaced it with the stationary bike and then like maybe a brisk walk if I feel, if I feel like it. But the stationary bike is a really good workout still as far as like pure cardio goes. 
Um, so I'm still working out and I'm nesting big time, big time. So that can, those things can contribute to weight loss at the very end. Also, um, your amniotic fluid kind of goes down at the very end because the baby's so big. It's like replacing the amount of fluid that's being retained in your uterus. So um, that's another thing that happens. Um, plus, you're just kind of out of room to like eat as much as you did before. So some women lose their appetite a little bit. Some women are still super hungry and like really hungry getting ready for um, the end of the, the labor and delivery. But they're just kind of like out of room, so you can't eat as much. So all those different things can contribute to the weight loss at the very, very end. But it is kind of a common sign for a lot of women that labor is in fact imminent and it's coming quick, fast and furious. So that didn't worry me too much um, and it didn't seem to worry him too much, but he did kind of like go, okay, so you lost pound and you know, you're getting more and more contractions. So, you know, you may just want to be ready kind of thing. Um, so the other night I did get Ava's bag ready for the hospital. I got my hospital bag ready all except for like the, the last minute things that I use every day. So I can't put them in there yet. Like my deodorant, my makeup bag, things like that. Everything else is completely packed and ready to go. Um, I even ended up including a couple things that I hadn't have didn't have in there before um, because I was planning to have a natural birth like not a natural birth but you know a vaginal birth um, and now having a c-section scheduled um, there were a couple of other things that I wanted to include in there suggestions from friends and things like that I will be happy to do um, a video on what's in my hospital bag and what's in the baby's hospital bag if that is of any interest to you and include the things that I've put in there for a scheduled c-section I'll be happy to do that so just let me know in the comments if you do want to see um, a video on that I'll be happy to do it um, so her hospital bag is ready my hospital bag is ready I boiled and sterilized all of the bottles that I have already as well as my electric breast pump, my medulla that I have, and the hand pump that I have. So I got all of that ready to go um, and it's sterilized and put away everything like that. Um, I got some of the last minute stuff like her like her sheets and her Moses basket and the fabric on all of the baby gear, like the swing and the Mamaru. I got all of that washed. Her closet and 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 dresser drawers, all of that are full of her clothes. Those are clean and ready for her. So I am feeling very ready. If she came home today, like I wouldn't I wouldn't be in a panic. I have two boxes of diapers ready. I've got a big box of wipes ready to go. So we're stocked and everything is just coming together. And I'll also say my husband is also nesting. Like he's totally nesting. It's one of the things I love about him. Like throughout each pregnancy, like he's kind of, he's had um, what they call Cuvade syndrome, Cuvade syndrome I'm not sure how you pronounce it but it's like a legitimate thing when the husband exhibits pregnancy symptoms he will come home from uh, working a full day at the office and then start working fast and furious to get ready for the baby like um, working on her co-sleeper or getting the garage organized and um, suddenly he needs to like clean this out and do that and he wants to get this ready and all this other stuff in like his areas of the house pretty much like he's suddenly got to get like organized and ready and, and put away and it's like his form of nesting his way of being ready for the baby and it's so cool like I love seeing it because it just makes me feel like he's just that much more involved and like in tune with with what's happening like his own body is sensing the fact that we've got another baby 
coming into this home and it's time to get ready. It's time to be ready for her. So it's exciting and I'm excited and I'm so happy to be at the end of this pregnancy and I can't wait to hold her and just have her here. I, I miss her terribly. Like I've never met her and I miss her. Like I'm sure a lot of you other moms can, can understand what that means. Um, yeah, I'm just, I'm ready and it's, it's going to be fantastic. I can't wait. Um, can't wait to get my body back <laughs> to myself. I can't wait to just start feeling normal again. And I'm, I'm looking forward to it. So I'll keep you um, updated and informed as much as I can. And let me know if you'd like me to do a video on my hospital bag. I certainly will.